and upon our crew's arrival, they found multiple victims inside the building. We did a primary search, removed as many of the people that we could physically remove, and went back through the building to make sure that there was nobody else that we could immediately find. There were approximately uh, 20 people that were treated. There were 15 approximately that were transported. One is in critical condition and is over at Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas because there were some burns involved with that patient. Um, our thoughts and prayers are with her and with their family. Um, I will tell you that the Fort Worth Fire Department uh, Fire Investigations Unit is in the, in the lead on the investigation of this. There um, was, obviously, there was uh, gas, natural gas involved. We do not know if gas caused the explosion or the explosion caused the gas problem. So that's part of the investigation, and we're working collaboratively uh, with the energy company Atmos to, to make that determination. We also had some barriers due to some water leaks that occurred that the building had to be pumped out. The, um, there was a lot of debris, a de two, two stories of debris collapsed into the basement where the primary, uh, the, the, uh, several of the victims were found. So because of the complexity of the building, the decision was made overnight to involve the state of Texas and some resources that they have through their uh, FEMA task force. Uh, we brought them in for two things. Mainly, we brought them in for their technical assistance from a structural collapse standpoint to make sure we were putting our people in a good position to be safe. We also brought in some dogs that we have been using across the state, across the country regarding cadaver dogs to make sure that if there was somebody that was trapped under the debris, we had the best opportunity to find them. That's part of what we call a secondary search. That uh, that search concluded this afternoon, a little over an hour ago, and we can confidently say at this point we have no indication that anybody is missing. We have no reports of anybody missing at this point. We have found no additional victims. So with that, we um, are continuing to work collaboratively with the Fort Worth Police Department, with the Marshal's Office, with other city departments such as code enforcement to try to make sure that this building not just is safe but is secure and that we can work with the rest of the city to make sure that we get back to as normal of a, a you know we've got parades coming and things like that so we're we're working on trying to figure out what the next step is because we expect that this is going to be closed for the next several days and i guess with that i'll take some questions hang on let me start over here So I, I don't have an answer to you on um, a report of a gas smell that was called to the 911 uh, office of the city of Fort Worth. It is my understanding that at about 338, we received a call of an explosion, but it is not my understanding that we investigated any smell of gas prior to that. You'd, I would have to defer to Atmos about whether or not they had received any call. Well, so we don't really know that. And, and that's part of the investigation. I will tell you with confidence that there's been a lot of social media reporting on different things um, that are nefarious in nature, and we have found no indication. We have found no indication, and I spoke to city council earlier today with Chief Noakes from the police department, and we have no indication that, that there's any uh, purposeful intent to cause harm here. So those are, what else could it be? it still remains to be determined. But it is obvious that there was something involving gas. It's just a matter of the chicken or the egg, what came first. So, so this is, that's a great question. The first thing that we had to do was remove surface area victims and get everybody out of there that was hurt that we could safely extract from the building, provide treatment, collaboration with MedStar, and um, get them to local area hospitals. And I'd like to thank them. They did a great job as well supporting uh, not just us, but the, but the issue here. Then secondarily, you go back in and you begin unlayering the collapse area to determine whether or not it's safe to continue. The city has structural engineers. He came in to make a determination for us last night that this building is imminently not gonna collapse and it's safe to continue working in. And we thank development department for that. 
But when we reached out to the state and we asked for their assets, they also offered, and we took them up on a structural collapse engineer, because as we remove debris, we want to make sure that as we alter the debris field, we're not creating additional opportunities for collapse and injury to our folks who are trying to complete a secondary assessment. I think that remains to be investigated, but I, I, I can't answer that with 100% certainty until we have the opportunity, our fire investigators have the opportunity for sure to interview all of the people impacted to determine where they were at in the structure when it happened. I think that's, that's, a, better, that's a better one left for me to say to you. I'll get back to you on that one. I have no, I have no indication from Atmos or Atmos that they were on scene and doing any work in the area. They did, they did not notify the fire department, to my knowledge, that hey, we've got a problem here. We need you to come out. And I, it, we're, I just left them, and and they are cooperating with us, trying to figure out the cause. And I, and I do think that it's important for me to leave one message with the general public, and that is, natural gas is really relatively safe. But if you smell anything, you smell the rotten egg smell of what natural gas is, then please call 911, please call the gas company, and we will immediately come out, investigate it, and try to determine the cause and, and contain it. Can you say where the, the most of the damage is? Is there any indication of where the explosion began and then where it goes in from there? Well, I think, I think it's safe to say that the, the debris field the, the, is in the basement area below grade of the building. Now, that appears to be the case from, from assessment of, of fire rescue teams that are in there. There is significant damage in the building, and uh, it is primarily in the sub-level area and obviously under the street, as you see, on the south side of the intersection. So is that to say that you think the explosion began down there in the basement where most of the damage is? I think that it's fair to say that that is a high area of concentration for our inspectors or for our investigators and for the gas folks as they try to determine a cause. That is a fair assumption, but I'm not prepared to confirm that for you. So I, I, there's a couple different things that are going on. First of all, we have started a uh, family reunification area for their personal belongings. There was approximately 28, seven, 28 rooms in the hotel that were occupied. We immediately, as soon as the building was rendered safe, we sent people in to get things that people needed, their travel documents, their medicine, stuff like that out of the room. But that was just a immediate thing. We're now going back in, we're working collaboratively with the leadership of the hotel to try to identify the belongings of people and get them back their belongings so they can go about their, their lives. Um, secondarily, so that's going on. Secondarily back there is that they are setting up a perimeter. They're gonna control that through the night with the idea that in the morning, we will begin trying to help the hotel um, board up their windows and things like that to make the building safe and secure. And then Atmos, and, and they can speak more to this, they are working on underground. They're, they're looking to make sure that they've done their due diligence to make sure that um, there's no pressure issues with the line there. So that's the three things that are going on back there right now. And can you have some example of when the road might reopen and some of these businesses might be able to... We will know more tomorrow afternoon at this time about that, but I would expect that maybe that later this evening this side of the road will open. That down there is going to be closed at least through tomorrow. Um, and at the very earliest, um, I would say, what, tomorrow's Wednesday, it'll be the end of the week before that's open because they're digging, they're going to have to fix whatever, find whatever, re repave whatever. So it's going to be, it's going to be closed for a period of time. I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't hear you. Yeah, so we've got a couple. Of, we got the stock, uh, stock rodeo, a uh, stock show rodeo parade. We've also got Martin Luther King parade coming up this weekend. There will be a meeting, city leadership, in the morning at the Emergency Operations Center to determine um, it with parade organizers what rerouting will look like around this scene. Chief, 
No, I, I, I'll have to verify that for you, because I, but nobody has told me that of, of anything that we've been working on or tracking or any emergency runs we've taken related to that in the last 48 hours. But I will have to verify that for you, and Craig can help me do that. Sir, there's lower levels in the building. Any concern in the mechanical room? You know, boilers? Yeah, there's... Yes, there is. It appears that there uh, was a laundry room down there. It appears that, um, you know, it's it's in an area where a restaurant, a bar area, when you walk in. So it's concrete flooring, that concrete's reinforced by, with, uh, uh, with uh, rebar that actually strengthens the concrete. So our folks had to cut through that, move that safely, make sure that they assessed what they were trying to do before they did it in order to make sure that they didn't secondarily collapse anything. But yes, there were there were um, mechanical rooms down there and the water came from the fire suppression system and the street uh, water system that, that is in that area of the building as well. So how you look at the last 24 hours, when you look back at the last 24 hours, take a step back, because when you first got this first call, heard what happened and came and saw what happened, what was going through your head at that moment as you were first trying to evaluate the scene? So I, I think from the first the first thing that you that you do is you trust your command staff to set up um, a immediate triage treatment transportation area, rescue surface victims, work collaboratively to secure the area with people like the police, make sure that the people are taken care of and that we've affected rescue. Um, once we get that done, you know nothing like this gets done without the collaboration of multiple departments. You know, as an example. You know, I mentioned the development department, uh, code enforcement. The, you know, there's just so many different people that TPW um, that, that come in that have to help us with this. This is not, hey, we're the fire department, we're the police department, we got this. There, there has to be collaboration. And so that's going on. So the first thing you do is surface area rescue. You make sure that you secure the area and then you look for extended victims. You make sure that they're all treated and transported. Once the scene is secure, then you start worrying about what caused it and, and what we're going to do about it. Ma'am? I've, I've seen minimal video of that, but yes. And that's part of the investigation. Um, street cameras and things like that are being accessed to make sure that as part of the investigation with the agencies that we're working collaboratively with, that they'll have access to all that information. Well, not at the moment because we ha we're we're just figuring out what's all available and we're figuring out um, how to get access to it. But as part of the ongoing investigation, not at the moment. But I'll let you talk to Craig about making sure that when it is, if it is, you you can have access to it. Okay. So <clears throat> I don't have a complete age range for you. It's my understanding they're all adults. It's my understanding that. Um, there are no children involved, um, but we are trying to work uh, with MedStar, who did the transport, to make sure that we give that information um, in a timely manner. You know, the majority of injuries in something like this are strains, lacerations, eye injuries, things like that from the debris. Um, there's some of the folks had concussion type injuries from the blast, um, and that's primarily it. The, the minor ones are aches, sprains, and strains with lacerations. The, more, the ones that are more serious are concussive type things from the explosion of the, of the gas. Okay, we're, we're gonna take one more question and we'll let the chief have one last comment. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have to defer that to Parkland. I can tell you that the last update I got um, is that they were being treated in the intensive care unit of Parkland. And, uh, and, and part of that is in the burn unit and that they are seriously uh, ill. Anybody else, one more? So I think that the first thing is that my, my first and foremost responsibility as the fire chief here, send my people home safe at the end of the shift, right? They didn't cause this issue. They're here to work with others like the police to clean it up and to do the best they can. So my first responsibility is, is them and their safety. Um, so that's where my, my heart lies, right? Secondarily, to the victims and their families. We're, they're in our thoughts and prayers and they always will be. Um, third is how we 
assure a community that, that this community is safe, we're resilient, that this is not a nefarious act, if indeed it wasn't, and how we learn from it to try to prevent it from happening in the future. Those are my, my take-home points. Thank, Thank you very you. much, everybody. Thank you.